It is getting cold. I think I might have got roofy. Last thing you know, I'm heading into the Bunny Ranch for an important business meeting, and now I wake up in the middle of the Sierra Nevada mountains in a snowstorm, freezing my ass off, no sleigh. Man, I hope I find somebody soon. I'm not gonna have anybody to spoon with. I'm gonna freeze to death out here. Whoa, hey, come on over. This is Rance's Jeepster. Oh man, how is it that we find another commando? I am glad to see you, Rance. Why don't you hop on in and uh, we can head on down the road and go to Uncle Tom's. It's all nice and warm in there. Maybe get a cold beer. I could definitely use a beverage, you know. Okay. Something Santa. with the taste of the Rockies in it, if you know what I mean. We got them. I see you got that nice uh, WFO cargo rack there. You know yes, what's going on here. Yes, I do. And uh, you think there's going to be room for me in there? Sure, Santa. <laughs> oh, the door's iced up. Oh! <laughs> How about that? All right, you ready to roll? Working. Let's go for it. All right. Whew, I needed this. It was getting cold. Oh. <laughs> Guess we're going this way. <laughs> now we're back that way, baby. Come around, yeah. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> Woo! Uh-oh. Tree! It don't want to get loose. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. A tree! <laughs> The old girl just don't have the motor. <laughs> no, just we, don't have we the need motor. to get a new heartbeat in this thing. <laughs> we for do. sure. It's that last time, or V8 at least. <laughs> that little V6 sounds good, but uh, it needs something else for sure. Maybe Santa can help you with that. <laughs> oh, I'm hoping so. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> these cranks are they can't roll up a window yeah. and what about even the lap belts <laughs> that's true huh well Rance before we go in there and get hydrated uh, headlights are on I want you to uh, show us this Jeep because you just don't see a lot of Jeeps or commandos and uh, this one is classic yet custom. Um, I know you've been working on it for a long time uh, and it's kind of going to be the Uncle Tom's Jeepster, right? Yeah, it's so, the UTC Jeepster built. The UTC Jeepster. So tell us first off, what year is this? It's 1970. So it's a 1970 Jeepster Commando and uh, you bought it? Did it already have this paint on here? Yes, just the way the paint is there. Uh, this is not actually a true half cab. A bulkhead was built and he sourced the half cab. Okay. But uh, it's cozy I always wanted to build one. 
for uh, a long time here and my good friend uh, Bob Rogi basically helped me build all the undercarriage link work, all the fab, axles, coil fab work and yeah. stuff there. Well, let's open the hood and show us what's under the hood. Yeah. This, this is something that isn't going to live here much longer, right? No. I right. got a, actually a 1970 350 Buick iron block that I'm throwing in it. And currently, this is a Odd Fire Buick. Odd Fire 225. 225. Which this is the engine that would have come in this Jeep, right? Exactly. And it was in there when you got it. Exactly. They didn't have a V8 in the Jeepsters till the Bullnose 7273. Okay. And uh, what transmission comes behind this thing? Well, they did actually come with automatics, the Turbo 400, but yep. a lot of them had the three speed on the column. In this one, when you got it, was it a Turbo 400 Jeep? It was a Turbo 400. Yep, so you got the Turbo 400 right now with the art car shifter, um, power steering on the 225, right? Yes. And uh, I noticed you got HEI ignition right here. Yes. And what's that carburetor you got on That's that? That's a thing? Rochester 2GC, the original old two barrel carburetors that were on it. And those Rochester two barrels, you know, back in the day, you know, I had a couple sleighs that were powered by 225s, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, yeah, they just other... chug a lug a lug, right? I mean, they don't flood out too much I mean, if you get them adjusted right. Yeah, I mean, my other two Jeeps, uh, I had this exact same motor. Yeah. And yeah, a couple times vapor locking here and there, but good little motor. So I can see underneath here, you got some old with the new, right? So first off, strut tower right over the top of the motor here, going to your shock tower. So yeah, that's uh, all Rogie did that. All and bas custom stuff. So basically that's making your stock Jeepster frame almost into a tube chassis, right? And then tell us what you got over there for your brakes, because that's, a, the that's a game changer. Hydro boost. Yeah. Hydro boost ba brakes. Um, yeah. This thing uh, in four low, I saw you just step on the brakes, it's one tap, the brakes, that's pretty important, right? It, it is. Especially with 40s and one tons. Exactly. Um, other than that, everything under here is pretty, pretty normal. I mean, you got stock exhaust manifolds, you got a mechanical fan, which I love, shroud, radiator, never gets hot. Um, so besides the HEI ignition and, you know, your, your, Suspension work on here is pretty much stock, couple dress up things, right? You got it. Air locker compressor. Well, let's close the hood and you can tell us about the front end and the front suspension in this thing. Well, I had these axles for another 70 that I have at the home before I bought this. And this is a Chevy so, Dana 60? Yeah, this is a Kingpin Chevy and 14 bolt out of a SUCV. A CUCV, they call yeah. them the cut Vs, but yeah. you know, basically a military Chevy. Uh, yes. One ton truck. So that means it would have come with 456s in a Detroit in the rear, right? It's exactly what it had. And I just had Derek over at uh, River City just do a gear change to 538s. So with the 40 inch tires of 538s, that's a much better setup. And especially when even when you get into the V8, it'll still A be little good. bit better road ability there, but definitely lacking the power. So I'm looking at this thing and it looks like you have a three link, right? Three so link with the pan hard bar, yes. The upper link goes to the top of the differential, uh, and you see it gusseted over there to the tubing. You got your bump pads basically where the leaf springs used to be. Uh, rad flow air bumps that are cut down to only two inches of travel. And uh, it also looks like you got are these rad flow coilovers as well. Yes. So Phil, rad flow. Phil from Liberty Mountain. Liberty Mountain set me up. Man, I was just up there uh, at, at his next door neighbor's a couple days ago. Um, got L-Rod limited straps from yep, Chris. Yep, and uh, um, no well, sway bars, huh? Not yet. Not yet. I, I mean, it's interesting. You could tell the suspension uh, geometry is pretty good because just coming down here on the highway, it doesn't have a ton of body roll or anything. No, I mean, for no sway bars, I mean, that is one thing that I did notice once on its debut run was it actually handled the road pretty good yeah once you get the v8 in you're going to want the sway bars so psc hydro assist right mm -hmm. and then you got an air locker in the front yes uh because the military rig didn't have a locker it was an open diff so you got an air locker in there um and i noticed uh just crossover steering not full high steer uh no. and what that allows is this thing to sit fairly low and it's got 10 inches of up travel which is mm -hmm. huge once you get some power in this thing start beating on the rubicon 
to allow that much up travel on a rock crawler is going to let you carry some momentum, have a good time, probably even go to the hammers, huh? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that, what I'm that's on the bucket for. list, right? Yes, that right. Moab, yes. Well, why don't you uh, show us around the rest here? Um, I noticed, is it the factory front fenders or did you trim some of this? Factory fenders, but actually, uh, when I took it to you, in to you guys and and uh, I think Andrew cut Andrew, this off. Andrew set me up with uh, I what? had a leaky pump, so I ended up going with uh, a new pump, and he set up the ram yeah. for us there. Um, and we trimmed your fenders and trimmed the fenders there, but that was after you wrecked it. That was the debut run up here the very first run i hit a freaking cow well, up here let's look at that fender that one's a lot better right <laughs> well hold on rewind you hit a cow and yes. this wasn't an overweight person this was an animal yeah and he pretty much uh left his cred up underneath there and just walked away <laughs> he just walked off oh i don't know how many people who uh, can say they hit a cow on Wentworth Springs Road. You know, we are, uh, you know, the gateway to the Rubicon and the Crystal Basin here at Uncle Tom's. Yeah. Um, basically, halfway between Georgetown and Ice House Road. Um, uh, this is the way to get to the Rubicon. Yes. The original way, right? Um, so, back to the rig. Pretty original looking on the outside, right? That was the um, whole idea behind the build there is I wanted to keep most of the originality of it there. Um, I mean, we did have to trim and here you go, Andrew set me up with a nice so little So the, the factory piece. fenders, there was no way to open them up or do anything no. with it. You basically then, just had to hack it all out. And then Bob stretched the wheelbase. I, I think I'm at 112 uh -huh. yeah. there, but 14 so, bolt rear. And I, I remember Andrew did this just because of how everything was cut out. It just didn't look right. So for, for the time exactly. being, we cut out this plate, put it over the outside. It kind of cleans up the wheel well. Um, one of my favorite things about this Jeep is the half cab. I mean, when you really sit back and look at it, and these half cabs have a hell of a lot more room than the CJ half cabs. I mean, mm -hmm. I had a scrambler with a half cab. Let me tell you, Santa can't fit in there, right? <laughs> but uh, we just rode back in this thing, and they're they're roomy, so I think it's yeah. worth it on a Jeepster to do the half cab. I'm I'm six four, and and actually, with the seat, with the way the seat is and stuff, there, uh, I, I'm comfortable. Yeah. So um, I can't look past this. What what size tires are these? Forties. And these are Nitto. Yep. Trail grapplers. Mm -hmm. And then what wheels are those? Those are Battleboard uh, Beadlocks. Okay steel bead locks um so i think i interrupted you a little bit of what bob did back here so he stretched the wheelbase and it's got a dual triangulated four link uh once again rad flow shocks i believe the fronts are 12s and 12, the rears are 14s four, yes uh, there you go i'm when it was at our shop i think <laughs> i was checking out they're 2.5 inch um yes coilovers so the thing that i'm looking at this and really liking is so this bed cage you can see it's tied into the frame the the front front the front shock back. towers are tied in, so you basically are are making this frame way more rigid than it ever was, right? Um, and no, f I hate fuel cells, right? So you still have a regular fuel tank, huh? I was able to keep the stock little tank in there. Really? So to yeah. me, to take up your space in the back with a big fuel cell is a pain in the ass. So you still fill it through the regular fill hole and the stock fuel tank. Now it only has 15 gallons, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, there's a give and take there. So tell us what's going on back here in the back. I do like the way Bob tied this all in there and stuff there, but uh, again, when I had it in, um, We put you know, one of our cargo baskets up yeah, here for you. Um, yeah. Well, that's just so Santa can put his presents up there, right? <laughs> then you, well, keep, you keep the ice chest underneath. Well, for right now, there. I mean, I would eventually like to put a slide ARB, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. um, and then uh, and then maybe even design a little uh, a little cargo rack up on top gotcha. there for my soft stuff when I am ready to wheel this bad boy. Well, I noticed you got um, your dad's toolbox in here. Like I haven't Heck. seen a toolbox like that, you know, since the '80s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a. Uh, that's nice. I think it's tipped over. For what me. else is hidden back? Oh, you got a battery box back there? No, that's just a little box with some extra More goodies. tools. Yeah, okay. A little air tank I back mean, there. I mean, the back of this thing is just so classic. Uh, the tail lights, everything. And 
one of the biggest problems with the Jeepster is this skirt normally goes way down and on each side on the corners goes way down. Yeah. So you kind of have to cut that off. I am going to probably have to trim this at least to where this cutoff is. Yeah. Because I would like to have, uh, I definitely, as you can see, I still need, need a, a bumper. bumper and I want to carry it on around here, tie it in. Yeah. Sliders still need to be put on. So 14 bolt, disc brakes, dual triangulated four link, 40 inch tires, length front and rear, um, maybe a little underpowered. We will talk a little bit about something else you're gonna take out is uh, what transfer case do you have right now? I got the GM 205. So it's got a Chevy 205 transfer yes. case, which is bulletproof, but being the gateway to the Rubicon, the turbo 400 and the 205 and 538s just doesn't do it, right? It's still not low enough. Hard on the transmission. So uh, I, we'll have this conversation maybe over a drink of whether you go an Atlas, a doubler, a crawl box, you know, but something. Definitely so you, something. You got a lot of things on the list still. You got a motor and you got a transfer case and yeah. you know, button up stuff. So I'll tell you what though. Yeah, the, Santa uh, needs to bring me some more gifts. <laughs> well, let's look inside real quick. So but, um, it, it does have a complete uh, brand new wiring harness, some neat little gauges that they incorporated right into the stock dash. Yeah. Yeah. Heater's kind of, heater sucks. So Heater that's another. Sucks. Wait, you, you were up here in the snow. You're picking me up, freezing my balls off. Yeah. And I was freezing all the way down the hill. You're right. The heater does suck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, look at this interior. It's classic. The door panels, yeah, all the metal. dash. I mean, all metal. Addition of the winter's shifter there. Um, um, it originally came with the old Kildorf shifter, okay. the old slap, slap drag shifter. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the metal part that comes with it. And I just kept that and then incorporated the uh, art car. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and then looks like these are like three quarter or low back seats. You know, that's like, it is very hard to find a seat that fits a project like this. You can't go buy PRPs with high backs. You can't buy anything that's thick. Like it's super important to have the seat that fits yeah. the build. I mean, when the inside cage gets done there, um, I might switch to, you know, maybe the classic low back yeah, PRP yeah. seats. Uh -huh. It'd be nice to have heated seats. H how tall are you, Rance? 6'4". So you're 6'4", and you fit in there. Your head I, was way far away from the ceiling yeah, already. Yeah, with the tilt wheel. Yeah. I mean, it, it you know, um, definitely uh, with the automatic, um, I definitely got a break with my left foot there yep, it, there's yep. just not enough room from the column to do exactly. the regular drive well, in there the but that's the thing about the jeepsters is the column goes down through the floor and that can start to get dangerous because when you're trying to a tall guy trying to move the gas pedal foot to hit the brakes and that well, ha something happened right didn't you didn't you spin out because of that yeah because it started to 360 on me and my automatic reaction was lift to off do the that gas pedal, yeah. and then by the time i was all and yep. angled up trying to hit the brake, I hit the bank and yeah. So so you got a two foot drive this thing, you know, and I love the gas pedal. That's, and that's the next best thing to the jet boat, you know, foot gas pedal. I mean, pedal. most guys that, that wheel automatics, they use their left yeah. to brake anyway when they wheel. Absolutely. So, you know, it, it, once, you, once you learn how to drive it, it is what it is, right? Yeah. Comfortable. Um, but yeah, no the, tunes yet. So that came with a lot of the goodies that I, when I got this there, so. You just gotta get the stereo in, yeah. De definitely, definitely a, um, a lot of little goodies still need to be done there to, to the, make there, me there happy. There isn't a drop of rust <laughs> on this thing. So all these back east people, you know, up there to the North Pole, all these, like they see something like this and it is rusted out. I literally walked around this, I didn't see one rusted out panel anywhere. No, when we started trimming, I mean, I did notice um, a little bit of Bondo yeah. there, but not much. Yeah. Pretty, pretty straight rig when I bought it. I mean, just a classic, cool, clean Jeepster. Um, I think that's about it. I think I need to go in and get myself a, a, a beverage. You want, why don't right. you show us around Uncle Tom's? There we go. How about a Coors Original? A Coors Original? A 
and I'll have a light. Propane fridge is there, by the way. So, you know, here we are in the state of California. Every other car is a Tesla. You got San Francisco, Sacramento, you know, LA, the highest populated areas. And here we are uh, an hour and a half up above Sacramento in the mountains. And we're, we're sitting at the bar at Uncle Tom's cabin. There's no power here. There's no phone line here. There's no sewer. There's definitely no plug-in for your Tesla, is there? No. And, uh, you know, the fridges are run by propane. Uh, some lights on. I hear a generator running. Yep, uh, right now I'm generator. And so how long has this place been in business? How long has it been open? What's the history of Uncle Tom's? Well, originated in 1864 by the name, a uh, gentleman named Tom Markham, um, minor trapper. You know, you're here, been serving the community. This place has been for, uh, what are we going to say, 130 years, 120 yeah. years? Right. Over 150. <laughs> Over 150 years, right? Yeah, so 150 years. Um, and it's still important for people to come by and see something like this because it does still exist off the grid like it was 100 years ago, except for TV playing in the back. Yeah. you know. But it is black and white Western, so <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, but we want to we encourage people to come in and say hi, right? Oh, yeah. This place definitely... Uh has been uh, um, uh, supported by the off-road community big time. I would say that a good majority of our support is the off-road community there, but we do have our locals that come up a, a lot. In the um, same family owns it, the fourth generation of the same family owns it, yes. and um, you come up here basically uh, Friday night for the weekend, and there's other people that keep it open uh, during the summer, there's somebody here almost all the time, correct? Yep. There's uh, 14 total cabins on the 40 acres. Uh, 13 of them are rented by the year. Um, and I've been one of them yearly people for over 20 years. And somebody can come in, come in here in the summertime, though, and camp, right? Yes. We have a campground area, and we do have one cabin that is available on nightly rentals. That you could rent it for a yes. night, yeah. So if you're stranded on the Rubicon or need a, a spot to base camp before you go into the Rubicon, you're coming yep. from out of state or whatever, look up Uncle Tom's. Uh, you can contact you off of um, uh, Instagram, our Facebook, Facebook. Page there, yep. yep. Um, and this is a great place to stage from. I mean, oh, yeah. for, how long does it take to get to the Rubicon from here? It's only, we're only 16, 17 miles from so here. So it's a, it's a 25, 30 yeah. minute drive. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty easy to do. What's the deal here? There's a lot of money on the ceiling. Yeah. The dollar bills didn't really start getting wallpapered till the eighties when Doug took it over from his mom. But the original meaning behind the dollar bills goes back to the Pino Grand logging days. There was over 18 logging camps, single gauge, regular gauge railroad. Uncle Tom's at that time was, um, you could buy food, you could rent yeah, a room. Yeah, this was like a trading you, post. Yeah, right? you yeah. could even get gas from the old gravity flow glass tank uh, gas no, ga pump. no gas here right now. No but, gas yeah. here right now. So how much money do you think's on on the ceiling here? Well over 10 grand. Well over 10 grand. And you said there was an original uh Confederate dollar bill that yes. was stolen. Yes. Um, and then somewhere in here there was even a hundred, and somebody yeah. stole it. But yeah. the general gist of it is, this is a, a happy place, a gathering place. I mean, oh this, yeah. It's why we're here at Christmas because uh, it's joyful. Anybody who comes here will not forget it. Mm -hmm. I came here uh, when I was 15 years old, and I remember the first day I came here, um, and I won't forget it. And there was no paved road at that no. point. This was still the gravel road oh, yeah. that went to Ice House, and it was Wentworth Springs, and, and that, that we had to stop. You're forced to have a beer. Well, one thing that is still the way the family runs it today was their main thing when they took it over um, was to keep it affordable for the traveled way. Yeah. So, I mean, you look at our prices. I mean, we're cheaper than what you can buy a beer. $4 beers. Beer $4. There. Ice cold $4 beers. Yeah. 
five five dollar yeah. uh, Sierra Nevada. Camping, um, camping ten dollars a night per vehicle. A nice rustic cabin that has heat. Yeah. Um, for fifty bucks a night. I mean, how do you beat that? Mm -mm. And the gist of it is, if anybody's coming up Wentworth Springs Road, you're going through Georgetown, you're headed to the Rubicon, it is a sin, and Santa's telling you that right now, it is a sin not to pull off the road, come in, I don't care how full your ice chest is full of beer, come in, talk to Rance, have a beer, pay your four bucks, enjoy it, and enjoy being a piece of history, then go up to the trail. That's what I'm uh, talking about. A lot of our yearly cabin people, um, they all have their expertise and, and there's three or four of us that commit to volunteer on, on bartending, caretaking. Um, no one's paid. Yeah, this isn't a, it's this like isn't a, big a for profit that, establishment. It's like a family that tries to just keep this place going and keep the uniqueness going. The money and, goes to the upkeep of the bathrooms, yes. to the to the power, to the generator, to the yep. solar system. Yep. You know, all that. So when somebody comes by and says hi, they're allowing a piece of history to stay open. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Rance, thanks for picking me up in the woods. You bet. Giving me a beer. <laughs> I think I'm going to uh, head on out and see if I can't... Uh, find my sleigh i kind of blacked out a little bit i think got roofied up there at the uh at the bunny ranch last night you know so i'm trying to gather myself uh, so i get my toys well, and go find the sleigh and uh head on out get well, ready for christmas appreciate you coming on up all right well thank you yeah, rance you bet oh, oh. <laughs> merry christmas merry christmas